How many? Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hands. How many? So when you buy this, you have to have this. So when you buy the phone, I need it for texting. You know, deaf people need this, right, for texting. But before they didn't have that kind. They had the old-fashioned one. I didn't have internet on the phone. And that's how we would save money. We did, there were certain things we did to save money. That was how our family saved money. So we didn't want internet on here. And then finally, they have, in the back room, they had some that were left that they didn't have anymore because it was hard to see the keys and the symbols. I had to hold it really close to see it, so I can have that without having internet on it, which is really cool, so I can text better. So I brought it home to use it, and the battery died the same day. So I plugged it in, and I waited, and then the battery charged, and then I used it, and then it died again. It kept dying every day. So it was broke. So I had to go back. I didn't worry about it. Oh, at T-Mobile. Got it at T-Mobile. I had to go back and let them know that it was broken. Why would you sell me a broken phone? So they gave me a new one. And they asked what was wrong. And I said, you have to keep charging it every day. And they said, yeah, you do have to charge it. It's a new kind. The smartphone. This isn't a smartphone, but that's how the smartphones are. You have to charge them every day. Have to charge it right every day and i said what there's no internet i have to charge it every day and they said yeah you have to that's technology i didn't like that so every day i have to every night i plug it in leave it i go to sleep and then if i forget i have to erase and go plug it in i don't want to leave it plugged in overnight i always unplug things at my house but anyway so you have to charge it every single day. You have to feed it every single day. So that was a lesson for me. <clears throat> so that's my lesson today about feeding. So in my 20s, I had an interesting life in my 20s. And I had a car. And every morning when I got ready to go to work, my battery was dead. And I had no money to buy a new battery. So I had to use jumper cables. So I'd have to think, who can I ask to help me? Who can jump my car? And then I'd find somebody and I had no jumper cables. No, I couldn't afford to buy those. So they would use jumper cables and then it would run all day and I could use it. And then I would leave it parked, go to bed. In the morning, it was dead again. My battery died again, so I'd have to recharge it. And I'd think, okay, who can I ask now? So my dad lived in the same town, and at that time there was no TTY, he was deaf, so I couldn't contact him, there was no VP, nothing, I couldn't text him, so I couldn't call my dad to call and help me, so I was stuck, and I was, didn't want to ask the same person, so I had to be creative, and I said, let's see, I asked him last Monday, so no, let's see who could I ask, and it was awful because I had no jumper cables, so now I have, oh, where's the jumper cables? Never miss church events, they always go. 
And if I need help, they help. So I realized, wow, that person said that they were going on vacation two weeks. And now they feel like their spiritual battery is low. And I kind of like that spiritual battery being low. And they needed, they said I need to have a charge again. So being on vacation for two weeks and they come back from vacation, it was less, they got less involved in the church, less reading the Bible, everything got less, less, less. Because on vacation, you know, there's worldly things to do and you're busy and the church becomes your last priority. So the woman said, my spiritual battery is low and I need help. And I really liked it. I thought that was cool. Because there's a story in Psalms. There's a person who writes of that person. His spiritual battery is low. And he sees all these people that have good lives. But they're not Christians. So they're doing bad behavior. And they're not good, but they have good lives. And their bodies are healthy. They have good families, good husbands, good wives. Good jobs, they have money, they get to go and do all this stuff. And how does that happen to them? They have all these things, but I have nothing. I'm sick. I'm having marriage problems. I can't find, you know, can't find a spouse. Or why in the people in the church can't have all these things, but they're not in the church and they have all these things. And so why is my spiritual battery low? And, I, and I'm angry because they have all these things and it's not fair. So we're going to read in Psalms about peace. So I hope that this will bring you peace. So let's look at that. So in Psalm 73, the man's name is Asaph. It's the same as David. He's a poet, and he writes the Psalms. So let's look at that. Verse 1 and 2, it says, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. So he's confessing to God that I've looked away from you, I've turned away from you, and that my spiritual battery is starting to become low. He's admitting that, he's confessing that. So that's the first step, we have to confess that we need more of him. We need him all the time, every day, we need to praise him all day, all night. So in verse 3, Three to four. Oh, to fourteen. It says, For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I want what they have. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes many or comes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice. With arrogance, they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, How would God know? Does the Most High know anything? This is what the wicked are like. Always free of care, they go on amassing wealth. Surely in vain, I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishments. I like this. I think this is important because 
That man, Asaph, he sees all the wealth, all the money, their good health. That, but they're not worshiping God, but they have all these things. And he's saying, I do obey God, and I do go to church, and I have nothing. Does that mean I'm doing it for no reason? And he's feeling dis despair. So he's looking. He's past the judgment on the outside, right? He's looking outside, what he sees, the outside appearance of people. And he thinks that that's a good life, and it's not fair. And we see that they're comfortable, it's not fair. And they have all these things, it's not fair, they're lucky. I want the same as they have. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to live alone. I don't want to struggle. I want the same as what they have. But we know better, right? If our spiritual battery is up, we know better. We can't look at the outside and make judgments. We know what happens to people who don't know Jesus, right? Right? We know what's going to happen to them. We think, oh, they're wealthy, and they've got all these things, and they're so lucky, lucky, lucky. But we know what will happen. Right? So why do we do that? Why do we talk about how lucky they are and wanting the same as them? We need to understand that they need us to pray for them. Not judge. Not say it's not fair. We need to pray for them. Because they need to be like us. It doesn't matter what we have or don't have. If we're healthy or not healthy. It doesn't matter because they need to know about our Lord, period. It's not that they're lucky, no. They have things, but you know what? Their money, their skills, their fancy cars, their things, will not get them into heaven. It will not. And if we substitute our jealousy and it's not fair, it's not fair and all that, and instead we use the spirit, spiritual eyes, we can get spiritualized. How? We have to charge our spiritual battery. We have to feed our battery. And then we'll start to see with spiritual eyes. We can see that maybe they have a mean heart, or they're proud, or their priority is just money, or getting promotions, or that God is not in their life. So then we need to start, instead of being jealous, instead of being angry and bitter, we need to feel bad for them, right? Maybe you think that's not easy, because I want those things, I want what they have, but it's very necessary you can't feel sorry for them. You need to, that's why you need to charge your spiritual battery. You must charge it. So verse 15 and 16 says, If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply. Again, it's confessing. It's very important that we confess. You know, in the Catholic Church, they have confession, right? Catholic Church, it's very important to them to confess. And I think it's important. God wants to hear us confess our weaknesses, our mistakes. He wants our confession, but we don't have to go through a priest. We can go straight through to our God right now. But we do need to confess. So in verse 18, oh wait, 17, verse 17, this is a powerful verse that said, I want you to look at this. Hang on, let me set it up. Remember Asaph, his spiritual battery is low. He's starting to see the world with worldly eyes. Everything that people have, and it's not fair, and it's jealous. And what has the church done for me? And I pray every single day, and... 
I give my money to the church and I come to church and I stand in the morning and I praise you and what are you, what are you doing with me? Where's my good life? Where? They have it. I want the same thing as them. So Asaph says that, right? And you know how that feels, right? I feel that way often. It hurts to see people who don't believe in God and they have good lives and we believe in God and we have hard lives sometimes, right? It's hard. It's hard for us. So why can't we have fancy houses and, and paid staff and all this stuff that these other churches have? We're looking through worldly eyes. So now, this is what Asaph did. I want you to look. Just one sentence. <laughs> Today, this must not work. It's another problem. Wow. Okay. So go ahead and look. Verse 17, what it says. Asaph says, I confess I'm sorry, I want the same thing as all of them. It's not fair, I'm jealous. Until I, I want you guys to sign this or say this with me. Till I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood their final destiny. What happened? Tell me what happened. What happened? He's jealous. His spiritual battery is low. He's jealous. He wants all this stuff. And then he, what? What did he do? His battery got charged, but how? He entered, he entered into the sanctuary. At that time, it was a Jewish sanctuary, but he entered into God's temple. He entered the temple, and then what happened? It's powerful. He was charged. His battery was charged and he felt good again. By entering the temple and then what does it say? He understood. Yes, we must understand his plan. We must understand his reasons. We must understand our situation. He has plans for our lives, right? So all the things that happen are for our benefit. For our benefit, period. But we can't see, we can't understand until we enter his holy place and our battery starts to recharge. It makes sense. Those people are not lucky. They are not lucky. They do not have Jesus, period. And that's sad. I prefer to have Jesus than to have all of that. Right? Right? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. It looks good, but that's worldly eyes. We see that we want to go over and have those things, and, but their spirit is lost, and that's sad. And we need to pray for them. Oh, wait. Okay, this one. So why do you think we have Bible study on Wednesdays? Why? Why Wednesday? Because it's the middle of the week, right? So in here, I hope your spiritual battery is charged on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So then you got to recharge. So we must charge without charging it. What do you think? Why do you think we have four kettle blessings every year? Why not just eat it all? Right. It's fellowship. It's a charge. It's feeding our battery. Same as with the church events. You think we just are bored and have nothing else to do, so we decide to get members to come together and plan for nothing? For fun? Yeah, it's for fun. But it's not because we're bored. It's because we need to come together and charge. Volleyball tonight, for example. 
VBS, volleyball, everything we do is to help feed your spiritual battery. That's the reason. Not because Pastor Debbie is very, 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 very boring and has nothing to do. It's to fellowship. It's to feed. To feed me, to feed you. I need to be fed too. Okay, verse 18. Man says, Surely you place them on slippery ground. You cast them down to ruin. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes. When you arise, Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. So we will realize more and more that our eyes become more clear when our battery is charged. It's a beautiful feeling. It's terrible to feel like you're in the dark, to feel like you can't understand, to be confused when problems pop up and you struggle. It's hard to be in the dark. So we must have a charge, we must. So I'm gonna jump ahead just a little bit because it's hot in here and well because it's hot here and we started late so i'm going to tell you a true story i only ever give you true stories and some of you may know this experience when you were a child or when you went to college you're a little bit scared so wondering who's influencing your kids when they go to college, and it's your teaching when they're little, and you have to trust that it's whether they're going to do the right or the wrong thing. But anyway, you have to do a lot of praying. But anyway, this boy went to college, a worldly college, and he was a strong Christian. And when he came back home, he told his mom, "I feel like my spirit, my battery's low." I'm starting to doubt God. So the mom decided, so she decided not to freak out. I would freak out, but I would for sure freak out and baptize him in and go to a priest and do all these things. But anyway, so I don't know what I would do. But anyway, so he came to his mother and she was very calm. And she said, okay, thank you for discussing that with me. And we can discuss it more later, but can you, do you mind, uh, my neighbor over here, do you remember that old man that lives over there? Do you mind? I've been bringing him lunch every day. Do you mind taking that for me? Taking lunch? And he's like, okay, yeah, that's fine. I'll go. And the mom said, he's not saved. He's been starting to, I've been starting to read the Bible for him. So do you mind maybe reading the Bible for him? And the son said, okay. Which book? Mom said, well, why don't you read the Gospel of John? So the boy left. So he went to feed the old man, and he sat, and he read to him. And when he came back, the son was crying, he was inspired, his spiritual battery was fully charged, and he was talking to his mom. And so that proves my point, because the boy charged his battery through reading the Bible. It made him feel wonderful again. So he went back to college, and then... We forget, right, when we go to college about the church and the Bible and our Christian life and everything there. So we see the batteries start to get less and less and less. And you said you had a testimony? Okay, so I have a couple things. Two years ago, my house, I had a fire in my house. But before that happened, you know, I fixed everything up, and I just cherished it. Something would break, I'd fix it. Then this fire happened, and I realized that this was all for nothing. And if I was not a Christian, I would have been upset, but I realized those things were worthless. And so then recently we had a flood in my house. And I thought, oh, okay. So we need to make this become good. So it's easy to look at the things that we want, but it's better to have our spirit grow. So 
So her testimony really is the truth because we had very strong family and to go through that experience. And that's hard to lose things in a fire because we cherish our things. It's hard to lose our things and then have a flood and these things keep happening. So it's hard to accept that. But you were able to see his plan and to trust him, to trust God. So if you feel like your spiritual battery is low and what's wrong with me, don't worry. Don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty. It happens to everyone. Just come and get your charge, get your feet, and feed your spiritual battery. With, I'm going to use a visual today. So if you feel like your spiritual battery is low, just come. And through all of these things, you can get your battery charged and you can feed your battery. Amen? Amen.